Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. As Nick enters Crimson Lights, he sees Phyllis thinking about a muffin. Upon noticing her distress, he inquires, What's going on? I'm good. Phyllis shrugs. Tell that to someone who doesn't know you, he says as he sits down. She refuses to share her muffin when he reaches for it. He believes that she is furious with Summer. Phyllis believed that her life with Kyle and Harrison would be ideal. She is now divorcing and battling for custody. Nick suggests there might be a middle ground between her and Kyle. It might come down to wanting what's best for Harrison. Phyllis finds it difficult that Kyle is acting like such a jerk. Nick gives a nod. He has truly gone insane over the past two months. Where on earth is this coming from? Phyllis claims his mother gave it to him. She was certain to work her poison sooner or later. Jack and Kyle have both transformed as a result of her, and they haven't improved either. Nick assures Phyllis that she is not to blame for what is happening with Kyle and Jack just because she despises Diane. Phyllis asserts that she would have done all within her ability to regain their trust if she had truly wanted to make apologies. Rather, she stole Kyle's job and tricked Jack into marrying her. Jack appears to love her, Nick responds. Phyllis claims he is unaware of anything connected to Diane. However, Kyle isn't. I believe Kyle is starting to recognize his mother for who she really is. She believes it is driving him over the edge. Diane knows she destroyed his life, and he's venting to Summer about it. Chance is enamored with Summer's appearance at the jazz lounge. She claims that because their last genuine date was a while ago, she wanted to appear particularly attractive for him. They share a kiss. As Chance helped her get back on track with Kyle, Summer extends a glass to him. She finds it hard to conceive that they could be able to reconcile. Summer fears that she will curse it. She is intelligent, attractive, compassionate, and the best mother. Chance assures her. The best things in the world are intended for her. Summer suggests that the cosmos presents things in an amusing manner. It just became complicated, not that Chance believes she's jinxed. They ponder about married individuals who manage to get through challenging situations. Although they couldn't make it work, her parents were in love. Her grandparents have also been absent at times. The question if happily ever after is a myth or even conceivable. Chance isn't going to give up on it yet. Summer believes he's correct. She is quite fortunate. I found you through the universe. Jack approaches Kyle as he sits at the club bar. Kyle questions whether his father could carry on acting as though he hadn't seen him. Jack tries to talk Kyle into getting a drink with him. After yet another run-in with his mother, Kyle left the house in search of some calm. She is just as unrelenting as Jack. They only want to mend the divide. According to Jack, a rift of your making, remarks Kyle. When Jack brings up Harrison, Kyle begs his father to refrain from using him as a pawn. I don't think you are either, Jack says to Kyle, expressing his unwillingness to let go of the love that is there. He wants to discuss ways that they can keep their relationship from falling apart. Rather than correcting his father, Kyle begs him to listen to him out. To me, this family is everything. Our achievements, our history, and our legacy. Becoming recognized as the next Jack Abbott was all he desired. But his favorite and most admired man, Kyle wonders how much more he can adore his mother. Before, he felt as though people valued what he had to offer, but these days, all he feels like is a piece in a larger scheme to please his mother. Jack says he wants him to succeed and be happy because he is proud of him. As long as I suck up the next indignity you throw at me, Kyle shrugs. They told him he needed to mature and learn about consequences, but Kyle sneers at that. That has reciprocal effects. Mom and you decided what to do. This is the result of your actions, a son who no longer has faith in you. Daniel and Heather had a romantic meal at society. When they discuss Lucy, Heather notes that she has been irritable and aloof. Heather worries for her. Faith questions her mother at Sharon's house about who gave the order to go. Sharon claims that she must have talked while she dust off on the couch. Faith asks, why are you lying to me? As she glances at the sofa, 
which is covered in washing and other stuff. Faith gestures toward the couch as Sharon refutes the lie. You couldn't have fallen asleep on this. She wants that she will be truthful with her, with them all. We wish to assist you. Sharon expresses regret. Faith asks, Tell me what's Sharon going on. acknowledges that she has been dating Cameron in addition to Cassie. Cameron has begun appearing in Sharon's nightmares, she says. Faith thinks this is awful. Clucking. Sharon says she didn't want to bring up unpleasant memories. What does he say or do? Faith queries. Sharon claims it's a madman's confused gibberish. I tell him to go away, over and over. Faith queries. Does he disappear? Sharon says. On occasion. Faith queries her medication. I'll give the doctor a call in the morning. Sharon is a dement. She pushes her to go out and enjoy herself with her pals. Lucy texts Faith out of the blue, saying, I'm in trouble. Could you please assist me? Faith lets out a breath. Faith informs Sharon that Lucy sneaked out of the house earlier and that she has already received a text from Lucy informing her that she is in trouble. Another text message appears, pleading with Faith to please come get her. She is unable to reach her parents. She promises that this will be the last favor she asks of her. Faith demonstrates to her mother. What if she was offended by what I said and did something dumb? Faith and Sharon understand that there is only one thing Sharon can do. Aid her. Faith replies to Lucy's text message, Where are you? Phyllis informs Nick in crimson lights that Diane destroyed Kyle and Summer's marriage. Nick chuckles. Is it really her intention to assign blame? Phyllis is aware of her involvement. Nick believes Kyle was extremely harsh. He finds it incomprehensible that while he could forgive his mother wholeheartedly for leaving him, he could not extend the same forgiveness to Summer. He believes Kyle ruined the union. Phyllis appreciates his pardon, but she will take responsibility for her actions since she is aware of what she did. And you know what else I intend to correct? Jack questions Kyle about Summer and him reaching a consensus at the club bar. After their amicable conversation, Kyle says he hopes they can avoid going to court over custody. To maintain their momentum, Jack believes they should bring up the notion of sharing a drink. What say you? Similar to the past. After pleading, Kyle demands his check. Jack inquires as to whether he will make up an explanation each time he wants to get together. Kyle believes it will be much simpler to stay away from one another completely. Jack leaves. Daniel shows Heather a text at Society and informs her that Lucy checked in some time ago. Since it was her first transgression, he hopes she recognizes she got off lightly. Although she has made mistakes, they are being corrected. He understands that she is aware of their efforts to assist her. Heather is concerned that some of their decisions led them to this situation. They've relocated frequently, and it wears them out to constantly try to blend in in new settings. It's never simple to find your tribe. They don't find it surprising that Lucy, who seems so collected and cool, is all about being Faith's friend. Faith discovers Lucy seated next to a bench on the ground in the park. After spotting an alcohol bottle, she yells, Really, Lucy? Please refrain from telling me that you own this. Because of her remorse, Nick at Crimson Lights cautions Phyllis not to get involved in Kyle and Summer's current predicament. She only needs to show her love and support since she and Summer are back in a good position. You know, she's my heart, Phyllis remarks. Her brother is also. She continues, shedding tears. They prove that she did something right. Nick reminds her that she made a lot of good decisions. He wants her promise that she will simply be Summer's rock and stop agitating the situation. She does nothing, even when she feels that everything is not going well. Please give me your word. To which Phyllis responds, Yes, I promise you that. She hands him her muffin. Daniel hopes that the society can prevent Lucy from making the kinds of mistakes that are irreversible. He and Heather talk about Cassie's mishap. Daniel questions whether Lucy is still upset with him over his downhill trajectory. Although Heather doesn't think so, their daughter's behavior has unquestionably changed. Heather is hoping to meet some kids her own age when school starts. Faith throws out the alcohol at the park, and Lucy remarks that she doesn't feel well. Faith finds out that she entered a bar covertly 
and took the bottle while the server wasn't looking. What is the matter with you? After seeing her, Lucy felt foolish and thought she had ruined everything. Faith restates that she is attending college and is older. Lucy objects when she tries to phone her parents. They will kill her if they discover her in this state. As she sneaked out, Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.